Psilocybin is a psychedelic drug that has shown promise in the treatment of depression. Just a couple of days ago, a study was published where psilocybin was compared to a conventional antidepressant for the first time ever. Now, is psilocybin the miracle cure some people have been waiting for? The title of the trial I'm discussing is Trial of Psilocybin versus Escitalopram for Depression. It's a phase 2 trial conducted by Dr. Robin Carhart Harris and colleagues, published in the New England Journal of Medicine. The study was a two arm, double blind, randomized controlled trial. Essentially, the trial compared the effects of psilocybin, a psychedelic drug originally found in the so-called magic mushrooms, to a more conventional antidepressant drug known as escitalopram. The patient population consisted of 59 people with major depressive disorder. This is not a large trial by any means, but pretty consistent for what has been done in the early trials of e.g. ketamine. Out of the 59 patients, 30 received a hefty dose of psilocybin and 29 received the placebo, or in this case a minimal amount of psilocybin thought to be essentially inactive. The psilocybin condition consisted of two dosing sessions of 25 mg of psilocybin each, with three weeks in between the doses. In addition, these patients took daily placebo capsules for six weeks. The escitalopram group received only a dose of 1 mg of psilocybin in the two dosing sessions, and took escitalopram instead of placebo capsules for the six weeks in a similar dosing schedule. All the patients received a psychological support. With regards to baseline assessments, psychological preparation and integration, I refer you to check the original paper. Also, any existing antidepressant medications were discontinued two to three weeks before the trial. The primary registered outcome of the study was a change in the quick inventory of depressive symptomatology, or KIDS, a self-reported questionnaire of depressive symptoms. A brief summary would be that both treatments produced a decrease in the KIDS score at 6 weeks, but there was no statistically significant difference between psilocybin and escitalopram groups. However, secondary outcomes, which included many different depression scales and other measures, generally favor psilocybin over escitalopram. But the analyses were not corrected for multiple comparisons. Interestingly, the incidence of adverse effects was essentially similar in the two groups. Now, let's talk more about what we can actually say about the study results and its major limitations. First of all, over the past few years, it has been my impression that an immense amount of hype has been built around the therapeutic potential of psychedelic drugs. Some people have been desperately waiting for the one study to rule them all. The study that shows how psychedelic drugs are the miracle cure that wipes depression and perhaps other psychiatric disorders from the face of the earth. I can only say that this study is not the one that fulfills all of those dreams. It is important to understand that depression is a very heterogeneous and complex disorder and it is unlikely that a magic bullet exists. However, it is a very important step towards understanding the role of psychedelic drugs in the treatment of depression, and based on the study, psilocybin definitely shows potential, as it clearly produces similar antidepressant outcomes as escitalopram. Certain treatments work well for certain patients, and the more treatments we have, the better. And as I continue my criticism of the study, I must also emphasize that this is really the most important study for the whole field of psychedelic research. Now, let's go back to the study itself. Looking at the study design and results, there are several important aspects to consider. First, there is no placebo or active control group in the study, meaning that patients who actually received an active dose of psilocybin will most likely know it. 
Moreover, the people present in the treatment and integration of the psychedelic experience may also become aware of the treatment condition, since a psychedelic experience can be a strong one, and likely the patients will uh, have strong recollections of their experience. For the study of psychoactive drugs, this is often a problem. Having no placebo group also means that it is impossible to distinguish the placebo effect and the role of psychological support from the effects of the treatments. Here, I would be most interested to see a trial comparing the effects of psilocybin to those of ketamine, since ketamine has been studied already for a couple of decades now and has been shown to be a very effective rapid-acting antidepressant treatment. Ketamine is also accompanied by a set of psychoactive effects and immersive experiences, although different from those of psilocybin. Second, while the secondary outcome measures suggest that psilocybin may be better than escitalopram, the study was not designed with corrections for multiple comparisons in mind, and as the authors point out, they cannot really draw proper conclusions from these tests. Also, the population recruited for this study was not random. Instead, most patients self-referred to the study. Recruitment messages uh, circulate among people enthusiastic to get psychedelics promoted as treatments, and this may create a bias for the study. In contrast, conventional antidepressants can be thought to have a poor reputation as medical treatments. While the impact of these factors can be quite difficult to estimate, uh, it is important to keep in mind that they may have an effect on the study outcomes. Moreover, the selection process excluded a large number of applicants. Ultimately, out of 1000 patients, only 59 were selected to participate in the study. This is a highly selected portion of depressive patients, which may not represent the larger population. As the authors pointed out, the period of six weeks may have been too short for the full effects of escitalopram to emerge. Conversely, it will be interesting to see in future analyses how the effects of psilocybin may be sustained for the following months. One thing to point out is that the patient population was not considered treatment resistant in this trial. Ketamine has been shown to be uh, remarkably effective in treating this population of patients and it remains to be seen how psilocybin ultimately compares to the effects of ketamine. Now, can we say that psilocybin is as effective as escitalopram? Well, it certainly looks that way. But this study was not a non-inferiority trial, nor did it aim to establish equivalence. Ultimately, a much larger multi-site, uh, active, placebo-controlled, randomized, double-blinded uh, trials are required to answer the question of the effectiveness of psilocybin for treating depression. For now, we can only say that psilocybin has shown antidepressant potential and it has passed the first true test, but it must still go a long way before it's accepted as uh, an effective treatment option for depressive patients. What I'd like to hear from you is whether this trial was up to your expectations or did you expect psilocybin to uh, be much better than uh, a conventional antidepressant in this kind of a trial? Leave any comments down below and also subscribe for future neuropharmacology content. Thank you for watching and I hope you to stick around.